is Steve from Sewing Gold and we're going to show you a brief lesson on how to use a typical TW3441S. The first thing we're going to do is wind a bobbin. You got to make sure you get that in between the discs and pull it in between the discs like that. One and two. Okay. And that's through the second hole, not the top hole. Okay. Now while we're going to do this two ways, we're going to do it while we're uh, sewing and also we're going to do it uh, when we're not sewing. If you're not sewing uh, and you want to wind a bobbin, you need to make sure that the foot is in the up position. Okay, and that's done with this piece back here. Okay, so you want the foot in the up position. Okay, and then you're able to wind the bobbin. And since the thread is nylon, you really got to get it around there good or even tie a knot. The thread is just so slick, you really got to get it tied around there. Okay, so Alberto, you could stop. Okay, so now we're going to stop now, and now we're going to thread the machine, and also show you how you can wind the bobbin while you're actually sewing. So we're going to now thread the machine. So that's with your other spool. Okay, let me just make sure you understood what you just did there. So let me just show them the other side again. So we went through that loop then through that hole, through the hole on the bottom, and then through that piece inside, okay? Oops, sorry, I wasn't doing that. There we go, through the hole again on the top, okay? Oops, sorry. Through the thread guide. Wait, let me go go back one sec. I'm not following you really good. Okay, so you see how it went that thread guide over the tension. Through that other thread guide. In between that tension disc. Make sure you pull it tight in between the discs. I guess you're going to do the thread guide first. Alright, where are we going next? Through the take up lever. Between that guide. Okay. Alright. And then we're going to go through the thread guide right above the needle. And then thread the needle from left to right. Okay, and make 
make sure you have some extra um, thread coming off. Okay, now we're going to show you how to put a bobbin in. Okay. Mm -hmm. Open, close. Okay. Okay. Is that the button not important? Okay. So there's a little button there that releases the bobbin. Okay. And then put the bobbin case back in. So we're going to release. Okay. We're going to grab a, a wound bobbin. Do that. You got to do that again really slow. Take it out. Okay. Do it again. See the thread goes in that slot and then comes back out through that clip, okay? And then snap your bobbin back in, okay? Leave a small amount of thread. Now you're going to turn your wheel one whole turn. Um, okay. And there your thread is out. Now you can cover where you're oh, going through the hole on the foot and then putting the thread to the back. Locking that in place. Okay. So now make sure when you did that, when you turn the hand wheel, the hand wheel always goes toward you. So it's always counterclockwise, it's never clockwise. So it's always, and there's an arrow here that shows you. So now we still have the bottom winder engaged. So you could actually sew, right here, you could sew while you're winding the bobbin. Make sure the presser foot's down. So as you can see, it's winding the bobbin while we're sewing. Going all the way up like that is reverse. Go back down, that's going forward. This bar is your stitch length. He's turning that piece. Um, counterclockwise. So basically the the farther you go down the longer the stitch. So the longest stitch is going to be all the way down. Okay. So it stops right there, that's your longest stitch. Okay, go ahead and make that really long. So the, the stitch is huge. I don't know if you're going to ever use this stitch, but it's a big, big stitch. Really, really long stitch compared to that shorter stitch from before. So, like I said, if you're going to go in reverse, it goes all the way up, and that'll make the equal uh, length of reverse that it went forward and then come all the way back down. Okay, but for the application that this customer has, the stitch should probably be shorter. Okay, that's how short our stitch is. So what stitch length was the one we were using for the rope? How long? Go back up, put this back up to the... Eight. It was at, what number was that on? Eight. Eight. quite a bit of a lot of turning to get this to go to the stitch link you want it's actually to lock it in place okay so now it's on number eight so the reverse is the same thing see how it won't go all the way up it's also on a number eight so it's even okay switch that
Now he's going in reverse. Going back down. And there's your stitch. See how much different it is. Okay, can you show him how to take the take the material out? All right, go slow. Because right down here, if we look, we've got two pedals. That one is to lift the foot up. So if we look, move it around, move it again. That's to lift your foot up. The other pedal on the other side is to engage the motor. Okay. What position should the... Okay, so basically, to make the release better, you, uh, to release the tension better, so you could pull the material easier, pulling the material, you want to put this piece in the up position, the take-up lever, and then, of course, push all the way down on the pedal, and that'll release your tension. Okay? Let's actually sew on their rope. Okay, so we couldn't get the rope totally flat. Um, we adjusted the tension as much as we could. Um, basically, this is the way we have the rope. Unfortunately, it's not, um, I'm sorry, not totally flat. I meant round, like you guys wanted it round. Um, so basically, I don't know if there's a way to press this back to getting more rounded. But this is as good as we can get it to sew. Go ahead and sew on that one. Okay, so now this is the way uh, you lock a stitch. So basically, go ahead and show them what you're doing. First stitch by hand. And then what he's going to do, he's going to go forward and then in reverse real quick. Go your three inches and then reverse it. And then that locks the stitch off. Okay, give me that, and then you're done. Okay, as you can see, whoops, the light's a little too much. It's double stitched here. That's just to lock the stitch. You don't necessarily have to do that. So like I was saying, um, the stitch looks thicker at one point because we went in reverse to lock the stitch off. You don't necessarily have to do that. You could tie it off if you really want to. But that's the proper way to lock a stitch is to make uh, go in reverse and then double up that stitch. You could just double up on the end and double up on the st on the start. It's sort of hard to see with the light real bright, but um, as you can see, it's sort of somewhat rounded on this one. Uh, the tension's a little better on this one. Okay, so we adjusted the machine properly for this material. Okay, the last thing I want to show you is the adjustment on the motor itself. This is the motor. The speed control on the motor is this dial right here. We've got it on a fairly slow speed and I think you're going to want to leave it that way. But same thing, if you want to go uh, counterclockwise to go slower, clockwise to go faster, you don't need to ever touch this switch. That'll make the motor go in reverse and you don't want to do that. Uh, so this dial right here is for your speed control. If anybody asks, uh, and they want to know this is for brushes for the motor. You're not going to need to change those for a long time, uh, but you don't need to touch that. So there's your lesson on a typical TW3441S. If you have any other questions, just give us a call, uh, either 888-505-4565 or 773-486-1784. I am Steve, and we're uh, Goldblatt Sewing Machine Companies, uh, better known as Sewing Gold. Thank you. Okay, I was just reminded, even after I just repeat and told you who we are, um, Alberto said that this place right here, uh, you're going to want to put silicone oil in there. It'll lubricate the thread, uh, just so the thread, I'm assuming, so the thread doesn't get too hot. But if you sew at the speed that we're sewing at, the thread's not going to get too hot. That's only if you're sewing at higher speeds. So you're basically going to put silicone oil on that pad in there, and then it'll lubricate the thread. Okay. I hope, hopefully I don't have to add anything else, um, but that should be it. If you have any other questions, like I said, just give us a call, 888-505-4565. Thanks.